Now, I'm coming back to the street plan of Washington in a second, but there's something I need to talk about before we come back. What you're looking at behind me is a place about 75 miles north of San Francisco, um, next to the Russian River. It's called Bohemian Grove. It's what you see behind the trees there. And Bohemian Grove has become notorious in research into not just the global manipulation politically, etc., but also into those people who are looking into satanic ritual and human sacrifice and blood drinking and all this stuff, again, which can be charted with these bloodlines from the ancient world. Um, and behind those trees are 2,700 acres of redwood forest, Bohemian Grove, where, um, and again in The Biggest Secret and some other of my other books, um, I, I document how people are sacrificed there, the blood drinking and stuff goes on, involving some of the most famous people in America and also um, from further afield, presidents and uh, business leaders and stuff like that, the Henry Kissingers of this world and the Bushes and people like that. Um, so here you have the entrance to it, no through road, as far as I could get uh, before it was no further. Um, here is um, a picture um, taken at Bohemian Grove in 1957. The guy standing up there is called Glenn Seaborg. He helped to develop uh, plutonium. I think he was involved in the Manhattan Project that created the bombs that were dropped on Japan, etc. But look either side of him. To his right, you have Uncle Ron. Ronnie Reagan, back in 57, just a B-movie actor. Going to be president of the United States. What, well, oh, Ron, you must be joking. Well, he became president. On the other side of Seaborg is um, Tricky Dicky, Richard Nixon, who went on to become president of the United States. And it's through these organizations, these elite secret societies and groupings like Bohemian Grove, um, that presidents and the other people in positions of apparent power, um, that's the, the route that puts them into these positions. Not surprising. Now, here's another picture at um, Bohemian Grove. Just concentrate a bit on this one, because it was taken on a long, long lens. Um, every summer, they have a summer camp um, in which these uh, elite members of this brotherhood um, go to Bohemian Grove to do their deeds and do their ceremonies and stuff. And they um, do them to the same deities that they, they, this bloodline has done, uh, has worshipped and uh, done their rituals to right back into the ancient world thousands of years ago where this story started. And what you're looking at here, staggeringly, is um, a group of people, some of the most famous people in America, in long gowns. Behind them there, you see a 40-foot stone owl. And there's the fire between them next to the lake at Bohemian Grove. Now, one, uh, one might wonder, uh, understandably, why the people that run the banking, political, um, economic system and the media in America should be dressed in long robes, doing a ceremony to a 40-foot stone owl. I think we should be told, myself. So what's it all about? Again, you have to go back to see the present. Back in the ancient world, these Phoenician, Canaanite, Babylonian uh, bloodstreams, which have merged to become the controlling force in the world, they worshipped a deity called Moloch or Moloch. It was a deity that uh, was an aspect of Nimrod, who keeps coming up everywhere, of course. And what they used to do um, is sacrifice children to Moloch or Moloch. Um, they put them through the fire. And in the Old Testament, you see prophets condemning the people for putting their children through the fire to Moloch or Moloch. When I've talked um, to contacts, uh, therapists and what have you around the world who work with satanically abused people, what those people tell them is that, again, when they're sacrificing children, uh, the deity in the modern world today that they use to sacrifice them to is Moloch or Moloch. Same seamless stream. So the question comes in relation to this, how do they symbolize Moloch or Moloch, this deity to which they sacrifice children? They do it. Uh, symbolize him as an owl. That's why the owl comes up all over the place. Now, when I was looking in the street plan of Washington, this is not in Talisman of the United States, this just caught my eye as I was looking through a Washington street map. Um, I found this around the Congress building. There's a Congress building in the middle. And just by drawing um, in red pen on the roads within the Congress building complex, very obviously an owl appears. 
You can also see an owl on the dollar bill if you can magnify it enough. It has to be magnified um, very, very uh, um, intensely, and then you see the, the owl in, in one of the corners. But when um, you look at the next shot, um, this is not being doctored by me in any way with a red pen. This is just a shot directly from a Washington street plan. And there you see around the Congress building the owl, Moloch, the deity going back to Babylon and this whole story I've been talking about. And he's actually sitting on top of a pyramid. A pyramid and all-seeing owl, just like the pyramid and all-seeing eye. Because the owl and the eye symbolize the same thing, this force which controls the world through these bloodlines. Also in the street plan of Washington, you find pentagrams. Symbols are not in themselves negative. Um, the five-pointed star, the um, pentagram as we call it, is not in itself negative. Just as the swastika in its original form is not negative, it was just a symbol of the sun. Other things too, probably. What the, what the um, Nazis did, however, was take the swastika and turn it round to indicate the negative. It's what they call re reverse symbolism in Satanism. So what they do with the pentagram, which is why it's become a satanic symbol, is to turn it upside down so it's pointing down. Reverse symbolism. It's the same with the dove, Semiramis. To the general population, the dove equals peace, love, and all this stuff. Reverse symbolism, the dove, dove equals death and destruction. So here we have two pentagrams in the uh, street plan of Washington. The top one points into the Capitol building, and the one at the bottom points into the White House. And not only do they reverse the pentagram to indicate the negative, another way of doing that is to distort the pentagram so it's not in a geometrically equal pattern, some lines are longer than others, and that's what you see here.